we're going to cover the detailed properties how a chart works and the chart that we're going to see today will be bar chart just drag it over here if you don't know how to upload the data within click so you can follow my other tutorials in the same playlist okay so we're going to add a dimension let's add a category name and a my year let's just add quantity and just sum it up so this is a very basic bar chart that we have now we're going to go over some basic properties so you know to make your working panel more you can just click over here to make it bigger just like by clicking over here you can use it so for the time being i need properties i need assets as well so just let's get over it. so the first property that we have this is a bar chart in the bar chart we have dimensions and measures in data then we have sorting then we have add on and then we have other functions so we will come to that later okay so in the data we have the options either we can add two dimensions or we have unlimited number of measures option in the bar dimension we just have these options so let's see one by one what these options are in field if we click this fx button we will be here and we can write a formula for the time being it's just category name but what we can do is we have the let's say first name and last name to make a complete name here you go and we just name it first name sorry full name okay so then there is another option that include null values or not what this value does is so first let me show you what options we have if you see there is a value there is some quantity which is not attributed to any person sometimes in databases it happens or for some modeling reasons that some transactions are not associated with some other data in normal databases or normal queries what we do is that we associate with do the inner join or the left join which make sure that there is no data outside these dimensions but in click we have because of the association we have this option that we can have the data outside those proper dimension that we have and this gives us a very useful insight how does that gives a useful insight we will come back to that uh in our analysis when we will come to the analysis videos we will do that but at the time being let's say you want to create an sql like function that if there is no person if the sale is there just ignore that particular sale so if i see it now you see that null is gone then other thing is that the limitation the limitation is that we can put some limitations on this particular dimension or a calculated dimension that we just have made first option limitation is fixed in the fixed we can have top or bottom 10 number of people it can be like bottom 20 let's say or more of the times people are want that i want to see my top 5 performers so you just can write top five. here you see there is an other as well so what happens is that you see the top four and the rest of the data is clubbed into an other thing so if we just tick this uh, uncheck this box so it will only show the top five first it was showing us top four and the rest was clubbed in others so kind of insignificant but we have the option to use then the second option that we have is the exact value exact value of your 
the the measure that we have so if we say just show us the values which are greater than 1000 so now we are only seeing the people where sum of quantity in cumulatively way is more greater than 1000 and by the way this values as we know that click is associated by model and whenever you make a selection it automatically uh, uh, take everyone on uh, so, so it automatically filter out the data so once it filter out the data it will dynamically recalculate this condition and again uh, if someone uh, based on the selection someone drops this threshold he will be dropped then we have the op and then we can you can see we have less than greater than we have the options for greater than less than as well so then we have the relative value relative value is essentially for example i am only interested in significant contributors and significant definition is that if a person has contributed more than five percent of the total sales he is significant error so we can just write it if he has overall sales more than five percent of the overall sales he should be the part of our analysis that's another way to do the analysis okay so let's just for the timing we say no limitation and then there is an option for master item so what happens is you see we just have created a formula that first and last name it might be the case that you do not have the full name you have first name and the last name and you are you will be required to have the full name time and again in different charts so rather than writing this expression every time you can just add it in the master dimension so once we do that it will open up a new dialog box here it will confirm those definitions and we can just click or create once you do the create you see there is a chain button will be here so this will give us the option that we can unlink that or we can edit master item and by editing this master item it will impacting everything so when now if we come now here in edit it will give us option to assign a specific color a library color to every person so just imagine that if we have a country and we can assign a different set colors to different countries or what so it can give us a very useful insights and information then we have measure field so in the measure field if you see it's just a simple formula if i just click on it it's sum of quantity we will come to that later in an expression video i will have a video where we will be discussing how we can make expressions so for the time being just it's assume that it's a simple excel formula where a column name is represented with the field name over here we can see which field name is here. we if you see these functions we have all these functions sum count average median and all those functions so we can apply those functions whenever we need. but let's go to the next part of that we can change the label and these labels can be dynamic if you want to make it dynamic you can just click over fx for example i just want to make it like sales and i want that it should be reflected total sales so whenever we are writing a dynamic and you want something fixed in the dynamic text you we sing, use single quote just remember in excel normally we use double quotes here we use single quotes so let's just sum of quantity and apply so you see now we have actual the total quantity over here and then we can then we have the option to for the number formatting for the time being we are not seeing the numbers over here if you see just we move, hover the mouse we see a number 1056k whatever so what if we want to change this number format so we have a lot of options we have number option we can do uh, select from this we have money option we have duration we have, and then we have custom option In the custom option it gives us the option what is my decimal separator 
this option is very useful when you are uh, your uh, system definite uh, uh, separators are different for example in germany and sweden uh, we use decimals and uh, thousand separators interchangeably that how we do in english speaking countries and then let's just get back to the number format and we use use the standard number format we can add a trend line in that end trend line we have the option that trend line can be a linear so it's give us another important outlook especially if you are working into the analytics uh, your uh, your end goal is to move to the data science or uh, put this data uh, in machine learning so just label is as trend you can just write whatever label you want or you can just wherever you see this fx sign you can write an expression you can make a formula out of it so here we have this trend line written dashed or not dashed and then definitely you can delete and you can add multiple trend lines for example one linear one average one second polynomial so you can also by do adding these lines you can just see that if your data fits into some statistical trend and then you can use that statistical based on those uh, analysis you can decide whichever machine learning model you are going to apply same as in dimensions we can add a master dimension so this is data part 1 we will meet in the next data part 2